Hello everyone, happy Sunday. This is Simon with our trade and we're starting our weekly webinar, trying to make a plan for the upcoming week. Trading prospects, mapping out your week ahead. A few things about myself. My name is Simon Friedman. I'm a senior account manager with our trade. Uh, my trading career started in June of 2000, as you know, the famous uh, dot-com bursting timing, I guess. And uh, since then, I've been uh, fascinated by markets and uh, I really love uh, trading and anything to do with the market. So I did prop trading for about 11 years. And after that, I moved to a less stressful environment. And currently, I'm very happy to be able to assist our customers at our trade. The agenda of the webinar, uh, especially for new people, that this is your first time, and of course, special welcoming to you. Uh, we talk a little bit about the big picture, about the week that ended, about the upcoming week in trading. We discuss indices, stocks, commodities, forex. Uh, we share some fundamentals, some technicals, and trying to make a plan. As and as I like to quote some traders that like to say, "You plan your trade, and then you." Trade your plan. This way, you can be more organized, more disciplined, and less spontaneous, and possibly increase your level of success. Risk warning: You can find full statement at avatrade.com. Everything we do here, of course, is educational. We do not suggest any trades. These are the channels, uh, social media channels of Abatrade. You have um, Telegram, you have X, or used to be Twitter, and YouTube channel, as I always like to say. This, this is my favorite channel. You can find a lot of fundamentals, uh, a lot of uh, market reviews. You can find uh tutorials and educational materials there also if you do miss or think you're going to miss the webinar don't stress you can find it uh, our webinars are being recorded and posted on youtube channel so please subscribe if you do watch it on uh, youtube please click the likes subscribe click on the bell so you'll be notified for new things coming in and of course uh, if you if you don't mind, uh, it would help us also if you write your feedback and uh, your uh, yeah the feedback on the webinar would be great. So we're trying to improve things as we go. Okay, so um, we're gonna continue. So as you know, sometimes I like to bring uh, screenshots. So this is the article. Um, Barons, you can find it at uh, marketwatch.com. And the title says here, the stock market is starting to sink. Earnings could fuel a turnaround. So, you know, we, we did start the earnings season. And uh, the first ones to report were banks. JP Morgan reported uh, the earnings were not so bad, but uh, the projection for the rest of the year are not so great. The stock tanked. We're going to take a look when we get to the charts. So some analysts are thinking maybe good earnings are going to refuel the stock market. I guess we'll find out. Also, it's been uh, an eventful week. As, as, as I said, we started the earnings season. Also, the inflation numbers came higher than expected. The market uh, triggered the sell-off. Um, also, as you know, over the weekend, there was a threat of uh, attack of Iran on Israel. It did happen. They uh, launched a lot of uh, rackets and uh, drones. And uh, I guess uh, everybody's worried now what's next, how Israel is going to retaliate. And it's going to be an interesting week, to say the least. Uh, we'll take a look how the week starts and how it progresses. So the focus was on the CPI numbers. As I said, the numbers came higher. Then we had uh, on Friday, 
Michigan Consumer Sentiment Index that came lower than expected. Uh, we'll take a look at the charts, uh, the instruments, so we'll try to analyze th those things. Now, here's the VIX uh, signaling. Uh, as you know, some people call it the fear factor. When the market is selling, the VIX is spiking up, and that's exactly what happened. As you could see, uh, it was a huge range on Friday from below 15 to all the way to above 19 and was settled at 17.31. So VIX are showing there's a lot of uh, uh, stress on the market. It looks like it. So uh, we'll see as, as the title here says, starting to sink. Doesn't, doesn't look so promising here. And earning could fuel the turnaround. That also doesn't so doesn't sound too convincing. I guess we'll uh, watch and see. Okay, economic calendar. Just a few things for new people. They're not familiar with that. You can find it uh, on our web trader or the mobile app. Also, any third-party provider. This is public information. Comes from the same source. And um, as I like to say, it's important to know about these things, uh, whether you use it uh, directly by trading those uh, numbers or the opposite, you stay away from them. But any trader should be aware of things coming up ahead of time so you won't be caught by surprise by those spikes and things and without knowing when, why, and you know what's the reason behind it. So, here also I take out high impact events only. So there are many of them. You can uh, filter through them. You can choose what what uh, actually uh, is a re a relative or connected to the trading that you do. Here I just take uh, events that are high impact. So let's just go through them really quick. Monday we have retail sales from US, important numbers. Tuesday. We have the economic numbers from China. We'll take a look at the moment. As we know, China is not doing that great. The government is trying to intervene. And uh, they did succeed for a while, but in the past week, the Chinese market sold. We'll take a look at the chart when we get there. So we have uh, GDP numbers, industrial production and retail sales from China coming out on Tuesday. We have employment data from UK. We have uh, CPI numbers from China. We have a uh, governor of Bank of England speaking on Tuesday as well. And CPI numbers from New Zealand are coming out on Tuesday as well. Wednesday, we have inflation numbers, CPI numbers from UK. And again, Governor Bailey speaking from uh, Bank of England. We have employment data from Australia on Thursday. and we have retail sales on Friday from UK. These are the high impact events. Like I said, there's so much more. Uh, you can uh, look through them. You can set up reminders for yourself, see whatever works for you. Okay, so um, let's take a look at the, at the chart. And uh, we we'll start with indices. Indices uh, finished the week low, of course. Dow Jones, I lost uh, 476 points. Let's start from Dow Jones here. And uh, it closed the week with a decline of 2.4%. It's a second big decline in a row on the weekly chart here, as you could see here. And um, S&P 500 as well, the second week in a row to the downside, losing 1.5% for the week. And NASDAQ as well, lost 1.6% for the week. And uh, again, two consecutive weeks here. Let's take a look at uh, Chinese index, as we said. On the weekly chart, we just erased four weeks of an attempt to move higher. And if you remember, last week we spoke about these levels, that 12,270, it's a strong resistance, takes us back to November of last year. 
when we started the sell-off from exactly that point. We had the retest uh, March 12th. Then we closed a higher on uh, the 1st of April. And since then, pretty much almost every day we sold. And currently we're just uh, below the 200 moving average and we're below the 50 moving average here in China. Let's see if uh, any upcoming numbers, as we discussed, will help the index. Uh, last week, I think I mentioned uh, there was an article that uh, caught my attention, said that uh, the real estate issues uh, start uh, affecting the banks. Maybe that's what's reflecting here. So the question is, what's next? If Chinese index continues lower, we want to see how it reacts to this uh, support that we had from which we made the higher high. So the low here was 11,740, around that number. Let's see if that might uh, become a support. If not, we can continue lower. Japanese index as well, after coming back below 40,000 to 90 here, the previous resistance, we, we traded higher, we came straight in and with some corrections we continue lower we just closed on friday below the 50 moving average here uh, i guess if we draw the trend line here we are below the trend line and uh, let's see if this continues of course a lot of it to do with the global market selling us china Europe is selling as well. We'll take a look at it in a moment. Also, the yen, we'll discuss yen when we get there as well. It's affecting the index as well. All right, so we spoke about US indices. Let's take a quick look at German DAX. After reaching the high here in the beginning of April, we've been sliding lower. We are still above all the moving averages here. Interestingly enough, we did close right at the lows of the previous day. Thursday, low was 18,093, and the close was 18,087, lower by four points, but very close to this. So let's see how we open on Monday. Let's see how, uh, how DAX reacts to the beginning of the week. And if we do slide lower, Definitely want to see the 50 day moving average being tested. And if we're trying to move higher, the support might become resistance here. You see, we started this uh, recent uh, move to the all time highs at 18,288. Sorry, the low uh, 18,155. Let's put it exactly. All right, so if we, if we have an attempt to move higher, uh, we need to break through 18,155 and rebuild the support in order to go higher. If we start building resistance here, we might be sliding lower from these points. UK as well. Hootsie, uh briefly last week established not didn't really establish just touch the all-time high with the spike and then since uh 12 p.m gmt on friday it's sold i guess it caught up with uh the global markets so as you see indices after making a very nice run some made the all-time highs most of them actually all-time highs beside china uh, they are uh, correcting to the downside. Now let's take a look at a few stocks. Actually, Dow Jones had two stocks that were uh, doing great for the week. Apple climbed 4.1% 4, 4, and Nike climbed 3.6%. So let's start from those. And it's important to notice that on the falling market, if you see the stock, uh, being strong and here it's really strong as you could see the stock recovered very nicely we almost hit the level of march 20th so in two days 
on the weekly chart, you could see it much better. On, in one week, which is pretty much the, the last two days of the week, we recovered the previous three weeks of down move. So we did try uh, above the 50 moving average, but closed lower. So I guess to the upside, Friday's high should be our indication. 170, 178 and 24 cents, 1.78 and a quarter. We want to see if that's being tested in the beginning of the week. And we just had a nice recovery from below 170. So that's Apple. Um, I was trying to find fundamentals there. It looks like some analysts are preaching that uh, Apple is doing great as far as the, the MacBooks and other products. So uh, they kind of injected uh, some positive mood into the stock. Reaction was very, very strong here. Nike, you remember we spoke about Nike, I think last week. The stock is it's been moving lower since the bad earnings, and I mentioned this um, support here at 88.58. We did come to it this past week, and we bounced nicely. So 3.6% to the upside. We opened with the gap on Thursday and moved higher, and Friday we held pretty much around the closing of the previous day. So let's see if Nike has some uh, energy to move higher. And if we are moving lower, so we might be retesting this again, 88.57. Boeing, they are in trouble. They are in trouble. So I'm just going to read uh, from the article directly quoting it. The Federal Aviation Administration is investigating the veteran Boeing engineer's allegation that the plane maker dismissed quality and safety concerning during production of its troubled 787 Dreamliner jet. Boeing said in a statement that the claims are inaccurate, that the company is confident in the safety of its jets, which it says, which it says are subject to rigorous FAA oversight. The claims come as Boeing faces broader scru scrutiny over its quality control and manufacturing operation at the wake of January's mid-year dope plug blowout. Okay, so we'll remember that issue with the door. And uh, this uh, past week we had an issue with the engine cover just falling off at the takeoff. So they did uh, make some reshuffling there, as we all know. Apparently, it's not enough, and the stock we just broke this past week through the uh, support of October of last year, 185, almost 186, and we are sliding lower here. So you could see if things continue this way, we might continue sliding. So let's see if uh, he, if we hear anything good, either positive or negative from Boeing. Uh, on Friday, I lost another 2%. All right, so that's on Boeing. Now, as I said, the banks started the earnings season. JP Morgan, as you could see here, doesn't look so good. The earnings came actually not so bad, but the projections for the rest of the year were not so good. And uh, one of the reasons they blame me for the mortgages, because of the high interest. In any event, this doesn't look good. The stock was leading the banking sector, as we know which made all-time highs recently. The whole sector was very strong. We'll take a look at other banks at the moment. And um, we gapped and continue we closed at the lows. So of course, the news is not so positive. The market itself sold down. So uh, there was an intense move on uh, JP Morgan to the downside. Uh, let's take a look what other banks did. Citigroup also reported. Uh, the, the news were good. Initially, the stock kept up, but then it sold as well. Uh, Goldman as well has been selling the past few days. I guess they'll be reporting soon. Uh, Bank of America looks similar to, to Goldman, actually. Three days with the gap down. Doesn't look so good. 
so let's watch the banks how how they develop in the upcoming week definitely we want to watch the jp morgan see if we have any buyers stepping in and if we continue sliding we are currently below the 50 moving average we just went through this previous support easily uh, let's see uh, where we might find some serious support there was some uh, accumulation here around 175 maybe if the stocks continue sliding we might see some buyers stepping in otherwise it actually about the same level as the current 100 moving average around 175 176 also intel continues sliding if you remember i mentioned last week the ceo was interviewed he didn't sound uh, convenient at all basically his his speech was uh yeah we're opening new factories it's a lot of uh uh spending and it takes five to seven years to to get to the profits and so on we we feel comfortable by the end of the decade by 2027 a few things sounded there and it sounded like okay investors don't worry we'll be fine but you have to wait uh maybe another three to five years as you could see the traders and investors didn't really like that so first of all we gapped and then we keep on falling way up below all the uh, three uh, moving averages and uh, if we continue this way we might be coming to around 32 but we had the triple attempt to break below that was uh, july of last year this is the weekly chart july august and uh, october of last year from which we actually bounced let's see so intel doesn't look so great uh let's take a look at the, the other big ones see how they do but meta after moving higher i think making all-time highs recently the stock is not really selling off heavily. But we had the three days to the upside Friday sell off, still up on the week, it looks like it. Let's see the weekly chart. Yeah, we're still, uh, we pretty much lost almost half of the previous strong week to the upside. Amazon looks strong here. Also, Friday sell off but uh, not below the Thursday's low. Tesla, uh, Tesla, as we know, it's very controversial. Uh, last thing I read about it, that they're lowering the price for their self-driving software. If you remember, what boosted the stock a little bit here or here was that they announced that they give uh, a free trial of one month. Now it looks like they lowered the price for that service for the, uh, for the software that the car can drive by itself google also has been strong until friday friday with it uh pop up above thursday's price and then was sold microsoft also a lot of consolidation here and this tight channel so we are between uh 417 you know, let's between 420 and 430, $10 uh, channel. It's been a lot of actions here, as you could see. We stopped this uh, strong move at 420. Then we had correction, then we came above 420 again. I've been fluctuating here for quite a while now. We entered that uh, channel on uh, March 14. So the whole month, pretty much. Yeah, from March 14, and we're on 14 today. The whole month was sitting in the tight range of $10. Are we ready to go higher? Are we ready to sell? <coughs> I guess we'll find out this upcoming week. And let's wrap it up with uh, Teva. As you could see here, we had double top, 1439. Again, for new people, uh, we spoke about Teva few times it's we start talking about it when we we found this pattern the teva has been moving between seven and eleven dollars zigzagging 
So we spoke about it around here again. So it could be a good idea to run that stock again. Then we made um, a higher low, then we broke to the previous high and then we went straight to 14.30. We also me mentioned that some analysts are setting up the price target at 19. That was a few weeks back. And uh, now I guess we are retesting the previous support around here, around 13 and a quarter, 13.15. So far we're holding it. We'll continue watching the action on the stock. We are holding, as I said, the support around 13.15. Uh, big range uh, past week, we erased pretty much the whole week of move to the upside. And uh, let's see, we are sitting right on that 50 day moving average. Let's see if Teva uh, manages to, to shoot out of this channel or if we go below 13, we might look for another support. It could be a hundred moving average here. It could be previous supports. We'll find out. Okay, let's move to commodities. We'll, we'll speak about gold, copper, oil, natural gas, and cocoa. Gold's been doing so great. We just made an all time high on Friday and then out of nowhere around 15 GMT, right? 3 PM GMT, there was a sell off. The same sell off happened in oil. It just after triggering all time high, which is tanked, right? Uh, let's see on daily chart. Uh, to the upside, I guess Friday's high, it's all time high, so it could be immediate resistance. The high is 2431 and a half around that area. And I guess uh, Thursday low. Would be our indication for possible breakdown to the downside. Oh, first of all, Friday's low, 233381. Let's set it up. So this is our Friday's range, which is uh, pretty big, almost $100, right? The low. The low 23.33, the high is 24.31. A little bit shy of $100, like $98, $99 range, huge range, right? More than double of Thursday's range, which was not small as well. Let's see here. 2020, 21, yeah. The last time we had such a range, there was a sell off on uh, December 4th. So um, let's see, I guess the upside 2431, the downside 2333. Let's see how we start the week with gold. Um, it could be uh, the Iran's actions it might trigger some fear of the things getting uh, hot in the region. Not they're not already hot, right? Uh, Let's see, maybe it was a technical reaction to something. Uh, in any event, uh, gold is continuing just to remind us the few reasons. The inflation is one reason. The uh, selling market could be another reason that uh, gold starts uh, acting like safe haven. And as well, as I mentioned last week, uh, the, the world central banks are purchasing physical gold to offset the inflation. And uh, let's see, gold's very interesting to watch in the upcoming week. Copper has been strong lately. This is not copper. So you could see here, we are trying to break through the resistance of uh, January of last year. We spoke that we might be retesting this level. We spoke about it last week. And we did actually try to break through and we failed, but it look, still looks very, very strong. So we'll continue watching it. Maybe we'll have another attempt to break through this 435 area. Oil, as I mentioned, had the similar reaction to gold right here at uh, 3 p.m. GMT time, just sold 
after making a highs here. So again, it doesn't act in a classical way. Usually when things get intense in the Middle East, I mean, it, it's been running up, so I, you can't say it's not acting, but uh, as we were entering the, the weekend, the US warned Israel that uh, the attack of uh, Iran is, uh, is happening. And um, I guess oil reacted initially to it, but then it sold. So I guess we stopped right here at uh, around 85 and a half. So let's see, first of all, what we hear tomorrow from the region. And let's see how oil reacts to it. Natural gas, it's worth stopping here uh, a little bit uh, closely to discuss it. Uh, for new people, if you remember, I mentioned it looks like we are in the cycle here, four-year cycle, at least visually. It's just my observation. Don't take it too serious. At the same time, don't take it too lightly. Uh, that's what the chart is showing us here. So March 2016, we started to move up, which after correction, moved higher here. And then slowly, we came back to the same level exactly four years later. So March 2016. March 2020, and here's March of 2024. So we spoke about it, that maybe 771 has been holding here, as you see. So maybe from here, that uh, leg to the upside will start as we just, it looks like a cyclical move here. So we did have a move up here, that was uh, April 1st. And uh, it looks like the buyers are holding it, but they prevent it from coming and hitting uh, 171 again. And we're sitting right on a 50 day moving average. Take a look, not even one closing since then, since we broke to the upside, we're sitting and it's rounding up here on the 50 moving average. Uh, Thursday was a sell-off, but we didn't close below. Friday was a little bit of a positive day. We closed at 177. In any event, we could easily break through it and go retest uh, 155, 156 here, right? What was the low? 152 even. Or we can uh, stop at 165. But it looks like some uh, buyers are coming in. And they are, uh, each move closer to that uh, 171 is being bought bought out. We got a move up here, we got another move up here, which technically made a higher high. So we did make a high low and a higher high. And if we make uh, another attempt to break to the previous high here, we might be on the way to retest $2 here. If the opposite happened then 165, I mean, immediately it's 171 and then lower 165 is the support. But again, this could be uh, actually interesting to watch if this repeats itself. Now here in 2020, 2020, of course, we had the huge move. A lot of things happened during these four years here. We had pandemic, we had war with uh, Ukraine and other things. So we'll be watching uh, natural gas and our cocoa, of course, as I mentioned last week, cocoa made 280% uh, move to the upside. On the daily chart, we are keep on making all time, or not, I don't know if it's all time highs, but at least a few decades. Uh, as, as you see, every correction caused move higher. So there was one, there was two. Consolidation here, move, another small correction here, another small, this was actually a little bigger, and we keep on moving higher. <coughs> Again, important to mention, it's all driven by huge shortage of physical cocoa in the Western Africa. It's simply not enough cocoa to supply. So as I, as I mentioned, uh, what can turn things around when demand slows down at this point, the prices are higher. Some stores are closing, some manufacturing are closing. They can just compete. They can survive with the huge prices of cocoa here. So some of them are actually closing. So. Let's see if we're having that tipping point when demand will slow and maybe that will affect the price of coke as of now. It's just simply flying. 
to the upside. Okay, let's move to Forex. So we'll start with uh, dollar index. We'll start with dollar index here. And as, as I mentioned to you last week, that uh, we have a retest 104.82, we did break through it, and then we went straight to the level of uh, November of last year, we stopped right there. As you could see, if you understand the markets a little bit, you can uh, try to predict the next levels where the instrument might stop. It doesn't guarantee anything, we can just get, get through it. See, here we had uh, retest, and here, we will move higher. Of course, the 10-year yields went higher at above four and a half. And uh, dollar just flew to the upside. We did close at 105.79. So next question is, is this level holding here? Last time when we reached this level, after being higher, then we retested, it became a resistance, and then we sold. Of course, on the hope that the Feds are going to cut the rates. Speaking of which, with the high inflation, as we mentioned, doesn't look that the Feds are cutting the rates in June. I just wanted to show you this number here. So this is for the June meeting, right? The probability of the Feds cutting the rates went down to 26.9%, 27%. And just to give you the the comparison so as of 14th of march the probability was 54 percent then april 5th it went to 50 almost 51 percent and since the last cpi numbers came out it just drastically dropped to 26.9 percent and we're sitting there so as you could see the strong inflation pretty much erased the probability of the feds cutting the rates. So some analysts are uh, just mentioned to show it. You can find it, uh, just type CME, CME group, uh, Fed Watch, and uh, you get to this uh, website. It's public. So um, that's, of course, affected the markets. Partially, that's why we sold, of course. Uh, there was a big hope. First, we had the hope that March, um, meeting will cut the rates, then inflation came in stronger. So they say it could be June, but since last week report, uh, it's being pushed. We don't know how it's gonna happen, but also as you could see dollars reacting to the upside as well. Okay, so uh, let's go through the majors, just try to figure it out. So as you remember, pound we said it's been uh, channeling between 126, 128. We broke through it on Wednesday. We broke through the 200 moving average and we broke through the previous support. Now we're kind of in the air here. We could continue lower. And if we if we do continue lower, we might be retesting a lower levels. So it's hard to predict. And we're not trying to predict anything here. But as of now, we did break through the previous support. We are below all the moving average. So if you look at the weekly chart, uh, the next on the weekly, it's a uh, 50-week moving average. Sorry, it's a 100-week moving average at 122.85. Euro as well went down. 108 was a key level. We broke through it again. We're sitting on the weekly chart as well on the 100 moving average at the 106.40. It was a strong drop last week, as you could see here. We did break through the previous support and if we if this continues the next major or strong support it's right here from which we made a reversal and the low here was 104.48 so that's uh could be another 200 pips well we can stop earlier uh at uh, 105.50 here we're not gonna guess we'll just watch what happens how the fundamentals and technicals apply. USDCAD also had a nice move to the upside as a dollar just came to, let's just remind us again, let's take a look at the index. 
we just had a nice recovery to the level of November. And this is a strong level, you see. We were here March of 2023, a year ago. Then we went higher, a lot of consolidation before the sell-off, and now we're back again. The question now, are we gonna jump higher and uh, test all this consolidation area, or we're gonna sell from here? And of course, the majors are gonna be reacting accordingly. Australian dollar, obviously sold, but it is uh, at the level that we have a solid support here. I had uh, this level tested in November, uh, 0.6450. Then we had it in February and we're back there again. So Aussie at least has a support right at this level. So let's see if it's holding. New Zealand dollar after nice correction continues lower. Uh, we are uh, selling on the high volume as you could see here. USDCHF, we did break through this level here of November. Just to remind us, uh, Swiss national banks, the first one to cut rates, so that also added weakness to it. And here also we had uh, Golden Cross a few days back, signaling possible move to the upside. And we did have two days closing above this level. So here, there's a chance that we might continue higher from here. And if not, we might be testing this uh, 0.91 level, possibly creating the support or diving below and creating the resistance and moving lower. So we have the strength of a dollar and the weakness of Swiss franc, uh, partially because of the recent interest rate cut as well. So we'll be watching that. Now, yen is very interesting. Dollar yen jumped, of course. We did break to this level. 152, 150, 151, 152, which just broke through it. And we did it on Wednesday. Thursday was a move higher. And Friday was another move higher. But take a look, we are stuck to Wednesday's high. So 153 and a quarter, right? 153.23. 153.23. So some analysts thinking that Bank of Japan uh, have no choice but to increase the interest rates because what happened, if the dollar continues higher, uh, it's, it's going to be very expensive for Japan to purchase everything they do because the yen is super, super weak. So it costs them a lot of money to buy all the commodities, all the products that they buy. So there's a pressure on Bank of Japan. They don't like to increase the rates. Uh, this last one that we went from minus 0 0.1 to zero, this was the first interest rate hike in the past 17 years. But it could be the Bank of Japan will need to do something, some uh, predicting some intervention to bring uh, to bring yen higher. Uh, so it could be. Uh, they're very famous for those uh, spikes in interventions. Because besides the dollar being strong, that's obvious here, yen looks weak, but if you go and take a look at others, they all sold against the yen on Friday. Here's Aussie JPY, here's CAD JPY, Euro JPY. They sold sharply against the yen. So some are predicting some kind of intervention, some kind of actions by Bank of Japan to increase the value of yen. So we'll definitely will be watching that. Okay, so two major things. We'll see what dollar does next, and we'll see what's happening with the yen. Okay, so that uh, wraps up the FX. And uh, Bitcoin just disappointed uh, the holders here. Take a look after really bouncing against this uh, 71,500. In the past few days, was sold. This was Friday selling, this was Saturday selling, and today is a little bit green. And it looks like we are holding this trend line Well, that simply connected the previous two lows. And it looks like we're holding here. We did break below 50 moving average here. I guess it went down together with the market, together with gold, and uh, with the strong dollar. So 
we're going to be watching the upcoming week for Bitcoin here. All right. So um, one more thing I just wanted to show you. Just remember it. It's MT5. Uh, NVIDIA. We'll be watching NVIDIA because I see now is the leader of, in uh, AI supply uh, of the AI hardware. The stock's been super strong and that contributed, of course, to the NASDAQ being high in the whole uh, tech sector. We are holding nicely here. We, we did have, uh, in a way, uh, it could be a reversal. We had a lower high and a lower low here. Let's see how it acts. Some predicting a thousand target and higher, some predicting um, a sell off here as this move was too strong, too fast. We're not going to guess, but uh, if you take a look at the weekly chart, this is the third consecutive week to the downside, but we are still holding nicely. So uh, NVIDIA is, or NASDAQ is very sensitive what NVIDIA is doing. So we'll be continue watching NVIDIA for the upcoming week. Just important to mention the uh, recent numbers. So the low of this week, let's just establish that. The low of this week on NVIDIA was $430.08 and the high was 907.13. That's about $77 range. Pretty big. So we'll be watching the high and the low for the week. Let's see which way Nvidia is going. So I just I wanted to mention uh, to mention that if you are trading the tech sector, it's worth watching Nvidia just as an indicator of what's happening. Okay. So um, again, uh, remind us uh, social media channels. Please subscribe Telegram, Twitter, or it's X now, and YouTube channel. If you are watching this YouTube channel, please leave your comments, uh, press on like, subscribe, uh, be aware of new things coming in. And I want to wish everyone a great weekend, whatever's left, a peaceful one, of course. And it's going to be an intense week. It's going to be a lot of actions on the market and in general in the world. So let's get some energy, be prepared for that. Uh, again, uh, the main focuses are, of course, development of things in the Middle East, with the Iran attack and everything else. We have a sell-off in the commodities the last uh, few hours on Friday. Let's see if that continues. Or oh, there was a temporary correction on oil and gold. Market is selling. Uh, the earnings started not in such a great way for banks. JP Morgan, especially as the leading bank, is sold. And we continue earnings this upcoming week. Have a wonderful week and successful one. And we should be back next Sunday. All the best.